Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to be demoing the amazing K9S GUI for Kubernetes. And I say GUI, it does run in the terminal, but it's still a GUI as you'll see. Now I assume knowledge of Kubernetes fundamentals, and I won't explain concepts such as pods, services, namespaces, but they will come up as part of this video. If you're new to Kubernetes though and want to learn more, I've recently created a Kubernetes course on Dome Train, which is linked down below. And the first 100 people to use discount code DANKUBE will get 20% off. The course is rammed full of demos. I'm not a fan of slides and the demos are easy to follow along with, with YAML and scripts provided. And I use K9S a lot in this course. So let's dig in and see why K9S is so good. So this is the K9S website. If you go to k9scli.io and if you scroll down, there's the installation and you can use package managers like Chocolatey or Brew or there's various different ways to install it, or you can build from source. I've already got it installed though, but it's quite easy to follow along with these instructions to install it. So before looking at K9S, we need a cluster to play around with. Now you might already have one. If not, then if you install Docker Desktop, go to Settings, Kubernetes, you can turn it on. And I already have it enabled. And before we started recording, I just reset the cluster. So I've got a nice clean cluster to start with. Once that's enabled, you should be able to go to the command line. And if you do kubectl get nodes, then we can see we've got the Docker desktop node. If you look at the description down below, I've got a link to a GitHub repository, which just has these files in it. I created these just so we've got something to browse in K9S. So this file is just applying these two files. So these two. If I look at web app one, it's a namespace called web app one. We've got an ingress, we've got a service, so I should have said that the ingress is webapp1.com. We've got a service, we've got a deployment, two replicas, and the container inside the pod is Nginx. Webapp2 is identical, except the namespace is webapp2, and the names of things are webapp2. The host name is webapp2.com, and we've got an ingress, a service, deployment, also at Nginx. I've also added a config map, which has foobar, as the configuration key and value. We've also got a secret, which is secret foo. And have a guess, secret is secret bar. Obviously with the secret, it's base64 encoded. I feel I should make a joke about a secret bar, but I won't. And we've also got install Nginx ingress controller, which this is included as well in the GitHub repository. This is just going to install the Nginx ingress controller so that we can actually access our website. And apply.ps1 just applies them, applies these two files. So if I go to the terminal, and I run install nginx ingress controller. This will take a minute. And then I'm going to run that apply to apply those. And now we're in a position we can start looking at k9s. So I've installed it so I can type k9s in the command line. And this opens up k9s. So let's have a look through at the different UI elements. So first of all, in the top left, there's information about the cluster, including version numbers. In the middle, there's recently used namespaces. Now this is super useful because Quite often you're working within a namespace and you can just press one, two, or whatever the related number is, and you can jump between your recently used namespaces. If you press zero, it will show whatever you're viewing. So we're looking at deployments here across all namespaces. And I'll show in a sec how to change what we're viewing. On the top right, there's a few keyboard shortcuts. In fact, if I zoom out a bit, then we can see more of what these are. Now these tend to be in the context of the thing you're viewing, like deployments. For example, it wouldn't make sense to scale a config map, for example. A lot of them do have similar things, like this has got uh, delete and describe and edit. You've got YAML as well. So a lot of them you can do, if I just go to one of these and press Y for YAML, then we can see we've got the YAML there. And I can press escape to go back. So I'm just going to zoom back in again, just to make it a bit bigger. Regarding shortcuts, you can also do a question mark and this shows a whole bunch of keyboard shortcuts as well one little gotcha is that there's actually some further down and it's not obvious there's no scroll bar so if i press down you can see there's just a few more down here but that's really useful and escape i can go back again a common way you'd navigate around is pressing the colon so this is kind of like very vim like where you've got a colon and then you get like a command palette so you can start typing for example namespaces and you can press tab to complete and enter and you can see here, this is showing namespaces. You can also do the colon and then the short version like NS. Just like on the command line, you could do kubectl get NS, the short versions. You can do the same here. 
if you are a Vim user, then obviously you can go up and down with the arrow keys, but you can also use the JK keys to go up and down, just like Vim. Another common shortcut is forward slash, where I can start typing what I want to search for. So if I type web app, then enter, then I'm filtering, and you can see up here, I'm filtering just by that keyword. And I can press escape to go back again. Now that search is different depending on what you're viewing. So I'm viewing a list here, so we saw how that worked. If I press Y for YAML on one of them, I can press slash and search within that, and then enter. And just like Vim, I can press N and P to go to next and previous. Oh, I can't do P actually, so next, and that will loop through. And then escape to go back. If I go to some pods, so I'm currently in the default namespace, so I can press this zero to go to all, so we can see them all. Or I can go back to NS, and I can actually go to like web app one, and we can see the pods. Do you remember that if we go to the YAML, I had two replicas? So you can see we've got two pods. So one of the shortcuts up here is L for logs. If I press L, then this starts viewing the logs. One common gotcha here is that it looks like there's no logs. You've got to press one of these to actually show logs that were already there. So I kind of get into the habit of doing, if I go back, escape, press L followed straight by zero, and then it starts tailing and I can see the more recent logs. So L zero and escape to go back. And again, if I do the logs again, that forward slash, I can start searching. So if I do process 40, for example, I can then start searching through the logs in the same way as I was searching through the list of the different resource types. Another very useful keyboard shortcut is control A. And this shows a list of, well, aliases, but it's all the different things, including things like custom resource definitions. So again, this is useful for very quickly finding stuff down here. And you can press forward slash, and there's nothing nginx, ingress. So you can start finding things quite quickly if you can't remember the full name. Whilst we're looking at logs, if we go to deployments, so I did colon, I've started typing deployment, and I can press tab to autocomplete and then enter. Then I can also do logs here. So if I press L0, we can see that's an aggregated view of all the pods that's managed by that deployment. If I go to services and do L0, we can see we guessed exactly the same for all pods that that service is routing to. Some other things we can do, if we go to pods, and if you press S for shell, and you can see this up here in the top right, then we can get a shell in there. So this, we've now got a shell inside that container. If I press exit, it goes back again. If I, if I go to deployments, then we can see we've got a few different hotkeys. So restart for R would do a rolling update for all the pods that are underneath it. So if I do R now, and then OK, then you can see it's gone red. If I enter into it, then you could see, I think you could briefly saw the rolling update then, and the new pods, and then escape to go back. Well, that's worth pointing out, actually. If you're in a deployment, and I press enter to go into it, so I can see the pods that are managed by that deployment, K9S then has like a breadcrumb kind of trail, where if I press escape, it goes back to that deployment. If I went straight to pods, then there's no escape because there's no breadcrumb. But if I go to deployments, so I'm just doing colon there, deployments. And when I went to pods, I just did colon pods. So you jump around with this colon command. But if I'm in deployments, I press enter. And I can press enter again, actually, to go into the containers with inside that pod. I don't know what happens if I press enter again. Let's find out. Oh, it goes into the logs. And then I can escape and go back. So we're in containers. Escape, we've gone to pods. Escape, we've gone to deployments. And then we're at the top of the breadcrumb. The same applies with services. So if I press enter into a service, you may not have seen that I switched over to services now. If I press enter, then it's showing the pods routed through by that service. So again, if I do enter again, that's gone to containers, enter again, it's gone to the logs. I can escape and walk back up that breadcrumb and we're back at services at the top. Some other useful things. So I've got E for edit. So if I click on, we've already seen that if I do Y for YAML, then we get the YAML, but that's read only. If I press escape and press E for edit, then it gets up your default editor, which is mine's Vim. And we can just edit in here and make some changes. And then when we save it, that'll reapply it. So for example, if I go to that config map that I created earlier, so I'm in web app one at the moment, and we only created that in web app two. So I don't have it up here because I've not gone to that namespace. So if I do colon NS and go down to web app two and colon config map, 
then we can see we've got this config map. If I press Y for YAML, we can see our foo bar, escape, E for edit. I can change foo to bar two or something, and then vim control cube, or however your default editor saves. If I quit out, then that will update it. So if I do Y for YAML now, we can see that it says foo and bar two. And actually, if I go to the deployment and restart like we saw before, so if I restart this one, then enter into it so we can see it's doing this rolling update. If I then S for shell, which we saw before, and do env, then we can see in here we've got our foo. Foo is bar two, so we've got the updated one. Because we recreated the pods, so we've got the updated config map now. And what other tips do we have? So if we go back to deployments, and then we know that we can do E for edit, and I mentioned the S for scale, I think, before. So whilst I could E for edit and change the replicas here, and then, well, let's do that. Then if I enter into it, we can see we've now got three, and then escape back to the deployment. We can also press the S for scale, and we can change it there. So I've done that. So if I press enter now, we can see it's already spun up another replica of our container, our pod. Another shortcut that's quite useful is if you press I, then you get the image and you also get the, the tag of that image. In my YAML file, I think I just put Nginx, but normally you'd have your image name, then like a build version number or something. So you can change that here as well and it will change it for the entire deployment. Likewise, you can, if you go to a pod, you can press I for image and you can change it just for that pod. We've looked at config maps, so let's go to secrets because if you remember, we created the secret. And if I view the YAML Y, then you can see secret foo and then the base64 encoded version, which is what you'd expect in the YAML. If I exit out, you can see up here, we've also got X for decode. So if I press X, then it shows the secrets and it's done the base64 decode. So secret foo, secret bar, which we saw before in the YAML. So escape to go back. What else can we show? So we've got for config maps and secrets, we've got U for used by, which is quite useful. So if I press U now, then it shows the references so we can see the deployment that's using it and config map, so colon config map, and then U there. Oh, I missed, I press Y. Escape, U there. Then we can see the references is the same one. What else do we have? Let's go to pods. A lot of the different resource types, there's control D for delete. So if I want to delete a pod, and this applies to whatever you're deleting, control D, I can then delete it quite easily. Obviously, the deployment is then seeing that the desired state doesn't match reality, so it creates another one, but we can see that it did delete it. Uh, another thing, if I go to pods, and I'll do zero to show all, we can do space. So I can multi-select things. So I'm not going to delete these, but you can see they've gone green. I could do control D and delete five things. Right. I think the last thing I want to show is remember when we did the question mark so we could see these shortcuts, some of these sortings are really useful. So we've got sort by age, sort by ready status, and there is a sort by status. So if we do, if you're showing all pods and then you can do shift A for age, we can see the newest ones at the top or shift s for status so we can see these you can also press Control z which is very useful now here it's going to hide everything but what this does is it shows things that are in a failed state so if you're trying to investigate something and you're showing all the pods Control z will just show you what's failed which is very useful and Control z again to toggle it back again so hopefully all that was really useful and gives you a good idea of how to use KNNS and a lot of tips and tricks as we went along. This is definitely my go-to when using Kubernetes and I use this every day. It's such an amazing Kubernetes GUI. And remember, if you want to learn more about Kubernetes or Docker, in the link down below, last year I did a Docker course on Dome Train, Docker for developers, and we went from zero to hero. And this year I released a Kubernetes course from zero to hero for developers, where in a similar format that I've done today, we go through from the very basics up until more complicated things and really explain with demos. It's very demo heavy how Kubernetes works and how to get the most out of it.